Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back for another Total War video with the Terminator. There are plenty of mods out there for Total War games set in late antiquity with Rome at the forefront and barbarian factions all around ripe for conquering. DEI in Rome 2 or Ancient Empires in Attila or Imperium Serectum in Rome Remastered. But there is one OG mod that people always talk about that really sets the bar for ancient history Total War. I am of course talking about Europa Barbarossa. Aurorum 2, the conversion mod for Medieval 2 Total War Kingdoms that is known for being the best mod ever made in this time period. Created by actual historians, the mod's aim is to give the player an even better Total War compared to EB1 through a deeper and more authentic Roman Total War experience with actual historical research behind every feature, balanced gameplay all around, and excellent battles. In this video, I'm going to show you everything about this mod from the 28 playable factions to the custom voice lines to the realistic economy systems and the hundreds of new units and by the end i guarantee you will have no choice but to download eb2 and check it out for yourself so let's get started. With the latest update released just last year, EB2 is still very much at the top of the all-time best mods ever released for a Total War game, and there are plenty of good reasons for that. Whether it's the immense historical research that's gone into all of the 28 playable factions, or the hundreds of custom voice lines that are in the native language of each faction. Starting with the Grand Campaign, we have a start date of 272 BC and 28 playable factions including Rome, Carthage, Macedon, Epirus, Greek city-states, Seleucids, Egypt, Bactria, Hayazdan, Pontus, Pahlava, Aduai, Arverni, Pritanoi, Lusitani, Suebos, Gete, Asabin, Sakarauka, Saromate, Mamlaha, Pergamum, Gandarans, Lugianis, Bosphoran Kingdom, Aravachi, Boyai, and Nabatea. They all of course come with completely custom-made unit rosters, unique starting positions with varying challenges and sets of circumstances, and with the historical nature of this mod and how unique each of these factions are, there is a fair bit of replayability. Each faction has its own methods of controlling new territories, its own systems of recruitment, its own political and social buildings, and though there is obviously overlap, EB still tailors the description to tell you what we know of these people, how they lived, how they fought, how they farmed, and how they made tools. The biggest thing I can tell you about the EB2 campaign though is that the gameplay is solid and challenging. Economies are slow to develop, armies are expensive to maintain, battles are decisive and tactical, and though EB2 is often referred to as one of the slowest mods you can play, it makes up for that slow pace with unique gameplay mechanics and a seriously beefy AI that will always punish you for the wrong decision and go aggressively against you when at war. For me, the most impressive aspect of the campaign though is that authentic feel of well-researched and polished historical realism. Every faction you play has custom voice lines, for example, that are of that culture's local language. So if you play as the Romans, you will hear voice lines that are in Latin. If you play as the Arverni, you're gonna hear voice lines in the local Gaulish language. And that's just one aspect of it. Characters, obviously, but also settlement names, units, certain traits and ancillaries, all of these are written in the local language which is pretty amazing really. EB1 for the original Rome Total War was really well known for its historical accuracy and well in EB2 you could say that was kicked up a notch by a wide margin. Every unit, building, character has a historical description outlining its significance and cultural, military, social impact at the time. Every single turn comes with a list of historical events that happened in that year. It's just a seriously immense piece of work from a historical historical realism perspective. That being said though, regardless of whether you like that or not, the mod is still really really good fun, the gameplay is very solid. The campaign is one of the most balanced I've come across with major empires definitely powerful, but in pretty challenging circumstances, more minor factions have a real chance at expanding into rebel areas, creating alliances and establishing themselves as emerging powers in the regions, and overall the AI puts up a decent fight against the player, unlike other mods where it can get at times a little 
little bit stale. Finally, on the campaign side of things, there's a few more minor details that I have to mention because they make a massive difference. You'll notice that the map is dotted with smaller settlements only for aesthetic reasons. This makes the landscape a bit fuller and not the more empty version of vanilla that I never liked. The UI is one of my favorites in any mod and is unique from faction to faction as well, which is a really nice touch. And lastly, whenever you capture a new settlement, you have to designate it as a tributary state or a military conquest, essentially dictating its level of autonomy and tax, which is a really well done empire management mechanic. On the battle side of things, Europa Barbarorum 2 does not disappoint either. There are hundreds of new units across every faction that make for really fun and visually appealing gameplay. They're all quite balanced and the AI knows fairly well how to use the different rosters, recruit decent armies, and put up a challenge. It's also worth noting that this is Medieval 2, so some city battle maps are custom made so they fit the time period, though not all of them, and this is an area that the mod team are currently working on. The latest images from their Twitter account shows some of that work with custom built Greek temples, residential buildings for cities of that part of the map to get completely custom made battle maps. I've played a few battles now with the Romans, the Bosphorans, Arverni, and Macedon, and so I speak from experience when I say the battles are a lot of fun. Music and custom voice lines aside, really excellent looking unit cards aside, the AI is seriously challenging. Like, Medieval 2 AI is overall not great, but here in EB2, it's awesome. I thought DEI was a bit tough on me when I first started it, but EB2 packs a punch with battle AI that plays tactically and uses units in a really smart way. It's honestly impressive. Finally, from the battle side of EB2, I'm going to just lay it down and say battles here are mechanically just so far above and beyond Rome 2 Total War. Rome 2 AI is janky, battles are covered in exploits and overpowered units, but in EB2, battle AI is so challenging, the slow pace of battles forces you to make tactical decisions, and all of that together means it's definitely better than vanilla Rome 2, which I guess isn't that high a bar to reach anyway. Overall, Europa Barbarorum 2 is a pretty amazing successor to the first mod in Rome, and it's one of the best conversion mods you can play for Medieval 2. Hell, if you enjoy Rome 2 or Attila, this has to be a mod you play because in many ways it does things far better. Just to also mention this briefly, but there is an unofficial port of Europa Barbarorum into Rome Total War Remastered, so if you're interested in that as well, you should definitely check it out. It's early days in porting development, but it's still really, really good. And that's it for today, guys. EV2 has an installation guide on the ModDB page, which I've linked below for you. It's a bit lengthy, and you need to install the base mod and then the latest patch to get the full up-to-date experience. But I promise, guys, it's 100% worth it. If you have any issues with the installation, you can always drop a comment below, or better yet, join my Discord as well, where I can help you one-on-one. -on -one. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and found it informative. Subscribe for more Total War content, gameplay, and news, and consider supporting me directly by becoming a member signing up on Patreon, or buying me a coffee. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.